What's up guys? Welcome to Blitz Gaming Miniatures. My name is Tyler. I'm the founder of Blitz Gaming. We started this channel to focus on miniatures and 3D printing. And since we're coming up on Black Friday and Christmas, you're probably wondering if you should get into the 3D printing scene so you can print awesome miniatures, components for games, upgrades, dioramas, and all kinds of other cool stuff. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the journey that I went through starting out with 3D printing and the things that I wish I knew when I got started with 3D printing and buying my first 3D printer. Now this channel definitely has a specific focus on gaming and miniatures. However, there are plenty of other things I like to print and that I have experience with designing and printing and I'm here to help you decide on what type of printer you should buy as well as what specific brands are going to be best for you. Let me tell you right now, this video is gonna be focused on SLA printing, which is printing with resin, liquid resin. Let me take you through my journey because I did not actually start with SLA printing, but I much, much, much prefer it now over FDM printing. FDM printing is where you have the spool of PLA, which is a, a plastic essentially that gets melted and extruded into individual layers. And that's actually how I started out. I started out with an Ender 3 Pro. If you've ever looked into 3D printing, you've certainly heard about the Ender 3 from Creality since it's a very versatile printer for its cost. However, one thing to keep in mind is that ease of use also comes at a cost. And as such, the Ender 3 is going to take some work to learn how to, how to use it, to learn how to maintain it, and to learn how to produce high quality prints. I didn't know what I was doing with my first Ender 3, even though my dad had recently bought one, he gave me some tips and tricks. Even so, I, I ended up kind of abusing the printer and now, today, <laughs> It's not really usable. I would have to buy some parts to replace because um, I, I, I broke some things. Let's just say that. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> um, FDM printers have a lot more motors than SLA printers. So there's a lot more that can go wrong, basically. Um, so what I did after that is I upgraded to an Ender 3 V2 thinking that it would be that much better and that much easier to maintain. And it just kind of wasn't. Today, it does work pretty well. Now that I have kind of figured out what issues it has, um, I believe most of the issues are because of the firmware as well as the way that they set up the printer in the first place. Like they set the voltages wrong on the motors. So I had to go in and manually change that. I hope that today they, they're not still doing that. It was just, it was new at the time, but um, man, that was an awful process. So I guess what I'm saying is that FDM printers come with their own learning curve. They have their own advantages too, of course. They tend to have much bigger build plates so you can print bigger things. They're great for printing tools and functional things that you can actually use in your day-to-day -day life. That's what FDM printers, in my opinion, are great for. But when I moved to SLA printing, which I started designing models. So I decided, you know, I should probably have an SLA printer so I can test the models with that. I bought one, it was the Anycubic Photon Mono, and let me tell you, I have fallen in love. I primarily like to print miniatures and game-related stuff, and so I don't usually need a massive build plate, and even if I do need to print something big, like an awesome-looking dragon or something, I can print it in pieces and then put those together. So the Anycubic Photon Mono, after I really just kind of systemized the process of cleaning up the prints after they're done. Oh my goodness. If you are into gaming, if you're into miniatures, if that's like the primary focus that you want a 3D printer for, I cannot recommend SLA printers highly enough. It, it, it's, it's such a massive change and it's such a massive difference. So the rest of this video is going to be talking about some of the printers that are the best first choices for SLA printing. And then in a future video, we could also do one for FDM printing because it really does have its merits. It's just my preference to do the SLA printing because of what I like to print. And as we go through, I, I'm gonna leave links in the description so you can go and check out the offers that are available right now for these printers. SLA printer number one, you guessed it, the Anycubic Photon Mono. So far, my experience with Anycubic as a brand has been phenomenal. I use the Anycubic resin, I use the printer, the Photon Mono, as well as the Anycubic wash and cure machine. I picked up some great tips and tricks in videos that I've seen 
and from talking to other 3D print hobbyists at game conventions. The idea that you're printing with a liquid rather than a solid, and that the prints have to be cleaned afterwards was a little bit daunting at first. But now that I've gotten it down to a system, it's so easy and so worth it because the quality of the miniatures that I can produce for the cost and the amount of time that it actually takes is more than worth it. These miniatures give me so much pleasure and joy to design as well as to print. You can get an Anycubic Photon Mono right now at the time of uploading this video for as little as $209. It's crazy how cheap 3D printing has become. Keep in mind you are gonna want some extra tools such as a scraper, gloves, and some other things that I'm gonna go over at the end of this video. This is where I also recommend getting the Anycubic wash and cure machine. You can place the build plate, which is sized perfectly, right on top of the cage here and let the machine spin some alcohol to clean off the print for you. Then after you let the print dry, you pop it off the build plate, place it back in the machine without the bucket on this little plate here and set it to cure for a couple of minutes. And this ensures that there's no residual liquid resin and that the print is hard and firm. My next recommendation for a first SLA printer is the Elegoo Mars. I don't personally own one, but I've heard great things from other people about the Elegoo Mars series. Something to keep in mind while you're shopping around for a printer is the UV technology that the printer uses. And by that, I'm primarily talking about the resolution of the screen as well as whether the screen is monochrome or RGB. If the screen is not mono or monochrome, the printer will take a lot longer to cure each layer, resulting in much longer print times, even up to three times as long. Printers like the Anycubic Photon Mono or the Elegoo Mars 3 can cure layers in as little as two or three seconds and move on to the next layer. A 4K screen is going to turn out higher quality than a 2K screen. I think it's worth it at this time. If you're thinking of jumping into the hobby, I would put out just that little bit of extra to get the 4K screen so you don't feel like you wanna upgrade later and have to buy another printer. If you're feeling like going the Elegoo direction, I'd recommend the Elegoo Mars 3, which has a monochrome 4K screen, meaning it prints fast and with great quality, bundled with the Elegoo Mercury Plus wash and cure station. And in total, that's gonna run you in a bundle about $300 at the time of uploading this video, saving you around $75 because you're buying them in a bundle. Keep in mind, you'll also want some other tools, as I mentioned before, and I'm gonna go over some of those things at the end of this list. Now, there are plenty of other 3D printers out there with different benefits, such as bigger build plate sizes, higher resolutions up to like 8K. But really, I believe that SLA printing is so straightforward. If you're just getting started as a hobbyist, I wouldn't go crazy with buying some intense 3D printer right out the gate, especially if you're not sure how into the hobby you're going to be. That being said, some other printers that are worth mentioning, and I'll link some of them below, are Flashforge. That's like an, it seems like an up and coming brand that I'm hearing a lot about and people are liking. Frozen, I hear, absolutely astounding things and the quality of frozen printers is astounding they are a bit more expensive but they're great printers and there are also some larger heavier duty 3d printers from elegoo and anycubic with larger build plates and higher resolutions up to 8k i've put together some links in the description where you can order one of these printers right now i'll put out a video in the next few days about my process for acquiring 3d files preparing them for print printing and then processing them. It really is actually a very simple process once you know it. So just click that big red button below and click the bell so you don't miss that video. There's a lot of things I'd like to share with you that I wish I knew when I started SLA 3D printing. Like I said before, when you systemize the process and have the right tools on hand, it becomes much more pleasant and easy. The tools I recommend if you're just getting started are a metal scraper for getting prints off the build plate, a plastic scraper for getting cured resin off of the FEP. This really only happens if a print fails. Latex gloves to protect your hands. Filters for when you need to put the resin back in its bottle. A flush cutter or some needle nose pliers to help with getting supports off of prints. A face mask to keep you from breathing in the resin fumes when working directly with the resin. And a toothbrush, which you probably have lying around from your last dentist visit. This helps to get tiny residual pieces of supports off for a clean final print. 
If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you're excited to get into resin 3D printing, but you're not sure what to print first, check out our Kickstarter campaign launching on December 1st. It's a Starship Advent Calendar. You heard right, we're releasing a new 3D printable model every day leading up to Christmas and giving you access to the new model on each day so you can start printing it that day. It's actually a playable game that happens to be a lot of fun and it's a great way to make use of your 3D prints instead of setting them on a shelf or in a box. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video where I'll show you my own 3D printing process and maybe I'll see you on Kickstarter as well. See you later, you bunch of nerds.